it's easy to think of holidays from a leadership point of view or from a managerial point of view are just about recharging the battery. But there's another side to it that actually you are probably going to be more creative and more insightful and more able to understand the world you're working in if you go on holiday. The question is from Thinking Focus. Hi, I'm Paul from Thinking Focus. Hi, I'm Richard from Thinking Focus. And the question is, why do we need holidays? The question is from Thinking Focus, a podcast about how we sometimes get in our own way and what we can do about it. So, Straight, yeah, strange question for, yeah. for people who work all the time to talk about. But yeah, why do we need holidays? Well, lots of people sort of uh, work for their holidays, don't they? It's it's why they come to work. But I think this year in particular, uh, after going through lockdown and perhaps the doubt that you were ever going to get a holiday, um, people have worked very hard. You know, a holiday's absolutely needed to recharge the batteries, isn't it? Yeah, I think so. I mean, I think I think you can sort of almost start with the basic bit here, which is this year, probably more than most years, it's been really hard. Most people are shattered. I was yeah. going to use a different word there, but it's a polite, children-friendly podcast. <laughs> yeah. But we're just shattered. You know, the, the, most people are drained. They're drained by constant video calling. Which is really draining, actually. It is, it is. And I think it's, oh, we talk about this a lot. Uh, you think for, for the introverts, for people who need time on their own, it's mm. just nonstop. They get no me time mm. and therefore come out of the day that's drained. But for the extroverts, they, they just can't get enough social interaction out yeah, of it. Yeah, it, so, it, so it doesn't fulfil you enough, does it? It doesn't yeah. give you enough in that regard, does it, if, you, if you're sort of extroverted and thrive on, you know, bouncing off other people? Yeah, I think we're also drained by a lack of engagement. I mean, the actual the interaction we have with people, the the social part of that, yeah, and there's the, the banter, uh, the fun. It's just it's not there. On top of that, as well, I think there's a there's a drained for a drained by for a lot of people who've perhaps worked from home and who were sat at the kitchen table or in an office or or wherever you know in the bedroom wherever they're working, drained by being in that same environment day after day. There's no difference in it, you know, whereas actually going to work, you've got the commute, you've got the walking around the office, you've got different meeting rooms. It might sound silly, but the, there are slightly different versions of the environment. It's not exactly the same room all day long. And there is tra- a transitionary thing that says, I was at work, I'm not at work. I mean, I think that's one of the things that people miss about commuting is it's transitionary. It's the journey between not not home and work, but between home life and work life. Well, that's uh, it's interesting you say that because I've been calling that, uh, when I've been talking to a number of our customers about this, I've been calling that decompression time, particularly the journey yeah. home. Yeah. When you, when you, however long it takes, 35 minutes, 40 minutes, an hour, whatever it is, but you leave the office, you sort of carrying the baggage of the day, aren't you? Yeah. Um, you get on the train, you get in the car, however you get home. Some people might run, whatever it is, but that period of time you sort of decompress, you think about what's happened, you, you, you deal with it, you, you file things away subconsciously, and then you walk in the front door and you start a different part of the day. And, and actually that's lost, isn't it now? And again, it is. that's lost because you sort of walk out the bedroom or you walk out the office or whatever, wherever you're working at home. And perhaps even harder if you sort of sat at the kitchen table and things have been going on around you. I totally agree um, because because there's no definition now there's between no split. yeah because because work and home are the same space. It's the same time frame, and this is why I think some people end up kind of working into the evening and and you know picking up their laptop later on because the the, the whole yeah. thing has kind of merged into one. The barriers have blurred. Yeah, you and I, we we have offices in our house uh, because of the kind of business we run and the way we work. And I found it the other way around that I used to quite like spending time in my office at the weekend because it would be where I do other things. And now I'm actually here every day. I don't want to come in here at the weekend. No, I've I've felt that as well. There's a couple of times um, I've come in here. I'm in I'm in that room now um, to do things, and I thought I I I don't want to do that in here, you know. And so I've I've picked the laptop up and I've gone and sat in the garden, or I've gone gone sat somewhere else uh, because you you almost there's been another switch where you start to see this room as work rather than yes. as being part of the house. Yeah, very much so. So I think so. I think you know the starting point of you know why do we need holidays is restorative. It's we need a break. We are most people are really tired. I think that's probably true most years. I think mm. that's definitely true this year. 
Um, I, I meet people all the time, or I meet people online all the time, which which makes me sound you know rather naughty. <laughs> but you know what I mean. Um, but I meet. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I'm going to lose it now. Um, you meet people all the time who just look, you know, you, you looking through you at the screen and they're just, you know, they're kind of bleary eyed, staring at the camera again. Um, and and yeah, I do wonder yeah, with some yeah. people whether there's a, there's kind of just a, a general lack of movement going on as well. But <laughs> that's, I think that's absolutely true. Uh, you know, you end up just being more sedentary, don't you? Hmm. But, but uh, you know, do you I, think, do you think that with, the holiday thing, though, that because it's been a tough period of work, because some people will have worked very hard to keep businesses going, they might feel, I can't afford to take time off. I've got to I see think- this through. I've got to, I've got to push on. I can't take my off the ball. But actually, that's quite, that's quite dangerous. It is. It's, I think if I, one of my kind of favourite, um, I was trying to, I was going to say self help, but kind of gurus in our industry, is the the late great Stephen Covey. Um, mm. You know, who I think in a nutshell, any seven habits summed up more than most of us will do in our careers. But that seventh habit of sharpen the saw always kind of strikes me as mm. being one of those kind of things, which is at some point you have to invest in the tool set. And for a manager or a leader, the tool set is you. Mm. You know, it's not, it's not the, yeah, it's, the, the uh, laptop it's, or the desk or the, it's you. Sharpening the mind, getting, yeah. getting away um, and, 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 and being in a different setting so whether you go and sit by a pool or whether you you know you go on a walking holiday or you you know you go on a boat or whatever it is it's being in a different setting actually gives you different surroundings gives you different different inspiration um you know eating different foods sleeping at different times all those things start to recharge some of the batteries and refocus us and there's some psychology behind all of that. So I think, uh, I don't know if you remember, a couple of years ago, one of our uh, blog articles talked about the advantages mm. of a break. Yeah. And it's just worth going back over that because um, there's some really interesting points. So the, you, you talked about a couple of things there. Um, so firstly, you know, actually taking a break, recharging the batteries is is quite good in terms of you know, re-energizing us. Um, we tend to run with the stress switch switched on a little bit too much. And yeah. the stress as a function of our of our body is designed to come on occasionally to amp us up to go and achieve something, you know, probably originally not to get eaten by something to be yeah, truthful. It's not, but it's not designed for being in meetings at your, at your desk all day on, on yeah. Zoom, is it? No, and it's certainly not designed to be left on. It's not no. designed to be full, an always yeah, on time. process. Yeah. Um, and, you know, I mean, one of the things I always kind of makes me laugh, and I, you know, I understand this now, but that doesn't mean I'm any better than anybody else, is the idea that one of the things stress does is it dampens down the immune system, mm. uh, which is, you know, probably not the best thing in the world with everything going on right now. Mm. But that that's why often a lot of people get, you know, a cold at Christmas or get a cold at the summer holiday, because when they when they turn the stress switch off, it then the immune allows. system yeah, the immune system's yeah. coming along and go right. What do I need to clear up? What do I need to yeah, sort out? It is a cold. Let's deal with yeah. that. You know, I've been yeah. holding this back. Let's let's deal with that. Um, and also in, within that as well, I suppose. Sorry, just before you touch on the other parts that are in the article, there's there's the thing about um, you know, the immune system's dampened by lack of sleep, isn't it? As well, and stress can bring on a lack of of sleep, can't it? Yeah, and I think I mean that's the, so one of the other things that I often think about in terms of why you need a break. Some sometimes actually you just need to reset those sleep cycles. You know, if you've gone through the last few months, you know, slightly stressed or very stressed, and and maybe you're getting to sleep a bit later, maybe that sleep isn't quite so good. Uh, I know lots of people are talking about the idea of COVID mm. dreaming. You know, this idea that we're having some fairly weird dreams at this point, probably related to the anxiety and the stress and all the mm. stuff that's going on yeah. around us. Then you add into that it's now summer and it's warm and it's hot and for a lot of people that makes it more difficult to sleep. So suddenly you're coming into this period where not only are you drained and you're probably very stressed because business is hard and the world is difficult right now and we have no idea where on earth it's going to end up. And then you're not getting enough sleep, so you're not getting enough kind of um, you know recharge and processing going on. That's quite yeah. a destructive space. So actually that break, that idea that you are going to sit by a pool and – and nod off for a while or or go for a walk in the country. All of those kind of things probably start to say, look, actually, this is a really valuable investment in time. You were were going to take us through some other elements. Yeah. So what we talked about in this blog article, which I think is interesting, and, and it's one of those articles that sort of comes up a lot, is to go, 
it's easy to think of holidays from a leadership point of view or from a managerial point of view are just about recharging the battery. And and I don't want to disrespect that part of it because it's a really important part of why you need to take a break. Yeah. You need to recharge, you need to sharpen yeah. the saw. But there's another side to it. Um, and so there's a couple of things that's worth thinking about. So one is that actually you are probably going to be more creative and more insightful and more able to understand the world you're working in if you go on holiday. And the reason for that is about how creativity and and how breakthroughs work. So there's a there's kind of a real th- – most people think, and it's I call it the Disneyfication of it or the Hollywoodization of it, yeah. that great ideas come from some magic aha moment. You know, some somebody has this amazing thought and that thought creates the breakthrough. Mm. But actually when people research creativity, it's rarely the case. And where creativity really comes from is the clash of contexts. It's it's when we put different paradigms and regimes together in our mind that we well, start to see the world differently. But this is this is absolutely true, isn't it? Because when we when we're coaching people in, in co- coaching customers of ours, one of the things that we'll often talk to them about is, you know, if you get up, get up and walk around, go for a walk, go and, you know, at lunchtime, yeah, if you're struggling with, a, struggling, with a, struggling with a problem that you're trying to think through, go and, you know, if you're working in a city, just, just find one of the parks and walk around the park or, you know, go do something different, go eat your lunch in a different place, go, because... That yeah. change of state and the environment being slightly different around you causes you to see different things and make different connections. Yes, and, so and you, even you just, more so if you can go to a different culture or a place that works in a different way. Yeah. So, you know, leaving leaving the city and going to the countryside or going to a foreign country and lying on a beach can have some really interesting effects in terms of how you perceive the world for that period of time. So that's the kind of first benefit. Yeah. The second benefit in terms of creativity and breakthrough and seeing the world and sort of solving the big problems that you need to solve is that all the kind of chunky, meaty stuff isn't really solved by conscious thought. Um, and I, I say that, and I know people might go, yes, it is. And you go, well, some of them are. Some some chunky, meaty stuff you will sit down and work through with a process, but they're not the really big ticket items that you get stuck on because you would just work through a process and, and sort those. There are quite a number of things that we kind of we sort out in the background, and that happens with a much more with our subconscious thought, and therefore we need to give the brain time to turn it over. So, so you know, sometimes mm. you you know people talk about you know you need to sleep on that, and you'll have an idea in the morning, and, and you go, why does that work? And it's because the the conscious brain is is going to do what it knows how to do. The subconscious brain is more powerful, and it's going to chuck yeah, things yeah, together. Yeah, yeah choose it over and spit something out. And, uh, yeah. you know, when you're on holiday, that might be throwing a Frisbee on the beach with the kids. Yes. Or it could be uh, reading a book, whatever. Yeah. But it, it gives, it, it's distracting the conscious brain from working on that issue and allowing it to, to sort of, yes, you know, be worked on elsewhere. Distracting is the key word there because what you need is the conscious brain occupied in something that's not so difficult it needs the subconscious brain to support it, but hard enough that it can't go off and wander and try and work on on the problems for itself. And, and this is this is also why I know we're sort of slightly going off topic of holidays, but this is also why it's good to have other interests outside of work. And I know lots of people do, but lots of people also struggle with that because it becomes, you know, and I've I've felt this in my own life. You know, it's sort of work and family, and they're really important. And my own interests have had to be pushed to the back because. I'm running out of time for them, if you see what I mean, dealing with yes. the, the work and family. But if I go and, you know, indulge in, in the things that I enjoy doing, which is difficult to do from a time management point of view, it distracts you from thinking about the other stuff. And, yes, therefore, so it, it, and, and therefore you actually do come back more creative uh, and more recharged. I mean, I, I certainly know that over the years when I've, I, I, as you know, I coach cricket teams. I know when I've, when I've, got back into it in the summer one of the things i often realized is oh for the last three hours i've not thought about the business you know yeah, I've, no, I've just very much something so. else. and i think um i think it's that kind of that that kind of piece i think you think you get multiple benefits out of doing those other things so one of them is that actually you're, you're occupying your conscious mind you're giving you're giving your brain some time to process and deal with some of these stuff these these bigger ticket items um it's the same reason why you know you kind of have great ideas on the drive to work or in the shower because you're you're yeah. you're focused on one thing your brain is freed up to think about some of the other things else. Hmm. um 
But the other part of that is it shifts your mood. So there's a bit in, I think, in positive psychology that's quite interesting here. So there's a, there's a psychologist, a lady called Barbara Fredrickson, who's done some amazing work about emotions yeah. and particularly positive emotions. So the good emotions, the stuff that, um, the stuff that, um, and I mean, I mean, and I'm going to beyond a bit. The stuff that psychology doesn't look at very often. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think this is kind of an argument in psychology that said up till about the year 2000, psychology was really about what went wrong with the brain Yeah. before the positive psychology movement kind of kicked in. It was all about, um, you know, all the things that, that are bad. Yeah, and so problem. Fredrickson comes along and, and says, you know, actually the, there's some real benefit of these positive emotions. They do something different to the negative emotions. So negative emotions primarily focus us. They kind of make us see the world or see the problem in front of us. They narrow you down. Yeah. So, so I always think, you know, if, if you think about when you're angry, all you can see in the world is the thing yeah. you're angry with. You can't yeah. see everything else. No. Positive emotions do exactly the opposite. Fredrickson called it broaden and build. So they kind of broaden our view of the world and allow us to build on what we know, to grow, to make connections, to learn new things, to discover more. And, and therefore, actually going and doing something that's out of the stressful environment of work, out of that kind of humdrum, stressy, day-to-day environment, and, you know, just chilling on a beach or walking with your kids or doing any of those kind of things. Yeah, changes bring the state. joy, the, bring you serenity, whatever the, those emotions are, changes yeah. the state and, and opens you up. Yes, exactly. And therefore you start to see the world differently and then and then and you make breakthroughs. You 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 do more for it. So so you kind of almost come back to, you know, with some of those those kind of different elements of it. The holiday is more than restorative. The holiday is more than just going, look, you know, go away for a couple of weeks, catch up on your sleep, chill out a little bit. It's actually changing your state in a way that's allowing you to see the world differently. And therefore, when you come back from, on, from oh. holiday, not only will you be more energized, but you'll have better solutions well, to the when big you, challenges. When you say it's more than restorative, restorative, it, it is restorative, isn't it? It's just, it's, it, it restores us in more ways than we realize. Is that yes. what you mean? Yes. Yeah. yeah, I think so. Yeah. I mean, I think we people tend to think of restorative, or I tend to think of restorative, as just that kind of, you know, building ourselves back up, you know, calming ourselves yeah. down, feeling okay, getting a bit of energy back. But I'm sort of arguing it's bigger than that. Yeah, no, no, I get, totally get you. We've said it on this on this podcast, haven't we? You know, recharge the batteries, which is quite yeah. an easy thing to say. What we've what you've talked about and what we've talked about is it? it yes, it does that but there's actually a number of layers as to why it does that. And that's why it's important. And I guess what we're saying is if you go and do it, particularly this year after a really tough year so far that everybody's had, if you're fortunate enough to be able to get away, um, it's going to bring you back much better, much sharper, much stronger, um, with much more creativity, more brain power, your immune system restored to be able to tackle you know, the, 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 yeah. the next half of the year. Yeah, and, and you're going to come back with, you know, some answers to some of the underlying challenges. You're going to see the world slightly differently. Mm. You're going to you're going to have just more ideas and more different options of approach. And you know, we know that the more ideas and the more different options you have, the more likely you are to succeed. It's a very simple, you know, formula or, or equation. So you kind of al- almost argue that this year more than ever, this summer more than ever. If you if you're leading people, if you're going to get a group of people back together to mm. to kind of you know get somewhere by the end of the year, you need to take a break. You need because because you're going to need to be on your metal for the rest of the year. Where should we go then? Good question. <laughs> <laughs> That's the hard part, isn't it? When uh, when actually it's very difficult this year to take a break, and, and maybe you know maybe that is taking a staycation. Maybe that is staying at home. But it is doing something different, and that you know, particularly now when home is work. Yeah, I was just going to say staying that staying at home is maybe not the easiest thing to do for a break. I, I was just going to say that you know, and, and that's not it's, that's not easy because lots of options about going away, perhaps you, you know, perhaps been taken away from people, and there's a financial impact and things for for, for many of us. So you know, maybe maybe actually staying at home is is the thing to to do, but you've got to be aware of the of the sort of blurred lines between 
what's work and what's home. Yeah, and and I think also, um, you know, maybe, you know, it sounds a bit twee, but but actually going, even if I'm staying at home, it's holiday. You know, if I if I was going somewhere, I would think of what we wanted to eat and plan meals and activities and do things. And maybe this year, you know, to take a break at home, that's what you need to do. Is kind of treat it distinctly like a holiday to create those very distinct boundaries between. I'm here having a break, not this is the place I work and I'm going to try and work a bit less. So um, I feel like to bring this to a close that uh, it's time for you to do your Cliff Richard impression and, and leave us, uh, lead us out with a song. And I'm going to press the button now and end it just there so we can cut it <laughs> off with you just saying that. <laughs> Next time on The Question Is. But I still think it is a form of grief. You're mourning a loss. You're mourning the the thing that you had, even if it was just your aspirations, even if you kind of thought, you know, this was the year I'm getting promoted and maybe that's been taken away from you. You're kind of still working in the same place, sort of doing the same thing and potentially not acknowledging what was lost. To find out how Thinking Focus can unlock the potential within your organisation, go to www.thinkingfocus.com where you'll discover more about the work we do, helping our clients increase productivity and enable change.